Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas. This is Hawaii is my mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. On Hawaii is my mainland. We try to be on the bright side and off the grid. And today I have two um, budding entrepreneurs and a recent grad from UH and a still in school at UH, um, Elia Bruno who's the founder and first executive director of Honolulu's new tool library. And with him is, if you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, a familiar <laughs> face. She was just here with Ethan, um, Kristen Jameson. Thanks for coming down. Thank you so much for having us on this show. So tool libraries, I, I ran into one for the first time a couple of years ago in Seattle and I thought, oh my gosh, why don't we have one in Hawaii? And et voila, here you are. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't quite that easy, was it? It definitely wasn't. <laughs> but I had the same reaction when I, when I heard about tool library and I was like, why are we not doing it in Hawaii? And decided to step up for it. Okay, well, tell us a, a little bit how you, how you brought it together and, and made it happen. Well, first of all, um, I just remember being in my backyard with a lot of awesome project ideas that I wanted to do. I wanted to build garden beds and uh, rain catchment and compost bin, and there I saw the struggle. This is never going to happen if I don't put so much money into buying tools that I'm, that I'm really going to use. I saw it didn't make sense, um, and I decided to do something about it. Uh, and I got, immediately got on Google, how can we solve this problem? There's got to be a better way. And that's how I learned about two libraries, and that's how I decided to do, step up for it and, and bring one to Hawaii. So you started this, and this is part of the, the sharing economy, really, in, in the best sense. And, and you, you broadened it by um, making it a, um, a membership based nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So these are all good things and you're um, including other parts of the community, including the, the space. So in every part of this, you are reusing and um, maximizing the, the use of these resources. And it's a great thing because most people don't even think anymore about how often is it going to be used or where is the space or the upkeep and the maintenance and all of that. So um, tell us uh, where, um, where it is and how it works. Yeah, so we are actually very proud and excited to um, have found a great home for the HNL2 library and that, that is at Reuse Hawaii. And for those of you who don't know, Reuse Hawaii is also a nonprofit and their goal is to upcycle all the material from, um, from old houses that would have otherwise gone to the landfill. So Reuse Hawaii was kind enough to, to let us use some of their space and their warehouse. And so right now we're sharing this space with this awesome organization that is also doing great stuff for the community. I think it makes it great because people that come to us looking for tools um, are also going to be able to get upcycled material from Reuse Hawaii. Let's take a peek. Yeah. Oh, oh you can talk. Um, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is this, what it looks like now. This, yeah, um, it's, it's evolving every day. Um, there is always more tools coming in, um, but it is definitely an evolving place. This, this is from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So, um, and, it, and actually, it's not limited just to tools, is it? Um, well, the definition of tool is very broad, right? Okay. <laughs> it's anything that allows you to do a job a little bit faster. Um, so in our original vision, we, we plan to have more than just the construction tools and gardening tools and expand it to camping equipment, sporting equipment, um, kitchen appliances, pretty much everything that makes sense sharing. Um, right now, we're starting with just tools because being a, that we are in a warehouse where there's you know, a lot of construction material around, maybe having kitchen appliances wouldn't be that clean for it. Um, but in our long-term plan and vision, we, we do plan on having more than what you would think as a tools. And obviously, Kristen, because you're sitting here, this is not a one-man show, and it's not just a man show. <laughs> um, there are, are two women who are in the, in the um, upper echelon. <laughs> yeah, so right. Bethany Brown's kind of the third leg of our tripod right now. And you guys all met up at UH, is that how this happened? 
So I was actually organizing um, a Manoa Honolulu soup. So Sam Ruiz um, organizes these amazing Honolulu soups, which are kind of crowdfunding campaigns for awesome ideas. Um, and I thought, you know, we got to bring this to UH so that UH students can fund their projects. Um, and Aaliyah submitted his idea for the Honolulu Tool Library, and that's kind of where he got his first $600 for the project. And, you know, from there, he just took it and ran with it. So Everything about the way this project has evolved has been um, uh, really embedded in the mission. I mean, you're really looking to maximize reuse and um, uh, the return to the community and keeping people involved. So you have, you're still at UH, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're also with the um, amazing UH Sustainability Office, office. right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. correct. So, um, but to make this big leap from this concept that you pitched at a crowdfunding um, event to it really being bricks and mortar now. How, mm -hmm. how did that process happen? Well, it was almost a year-long process, um, which involved definitely a lot of effort. But pretty much after I won the $600 at Soup, that helped me being more committed than ever because you know, I was in a situation where I either swim or drown. You know, the community, <laughs> the community really invested in me, and yeah. I wasn't gonna, you know, I wasn't gonna fail. You know, I, I just decided that. Um, so I started by, you know, classic like build a web website and start making a plan. Um, but I think a very important investment that I did was to fly out to the mainland where two libraries already exist and learn from them how how are they doing it. So I was lucky enough to get to attend the very first International Lending Library Symposium um, that took place at a uh, tool library in Baltimore, where I got to learn from two library founders from the mainland, from Canada, from um, even Europe. And so it wasn't just, uh, but the symposium wasn't just tool libraries. So it, it wasn't just tool libraries, it was also um, toy libraries. Oh, you know, library. if you have a kid, you know, your kids are going to want a lot of toys, and then they get over it after a week. Why, why, why? <laughs> buy buy more toys when you can just borrow and then return them as your kids get bored with them. Great idea. Yeah. So what what was your what did you think after um, hearing about the experiences of other t tool libraries? Did that change your model in any way? Oh, it definitely um, helped me get more inspired inspired and and the m the more I got to talk to them, the more and the more I got to learn about two libraries, the more I was con convinced that Hawaii really needed one because I got to learn about the impact that two libraries have in their community, and it just makes even more sense to start sharing here in Hawaii where we're so isolated and we rely so much on imports. Yeah, and it costs so much not just for the import in the in the dollars and cents, but also in carbon footprint oh, and all of that. Absolutely. And you have some really great um, uh, statistics to show for that. You you sent me the statistics on, um, you know, what is the life cycle? To, uh, you you've looked into it, the life cycle costing and of of tools. And so look at yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. So right now we're pretty much looking at the carbon footprint of a drill since it's created until it's disposed. Um, what we see. And the center is the carbon footprint of peop five people using one drill. And what we see on the right is the carbon footprint of five people owning each of them has a drill. So five people in five drill. And we're looking, I mean, it, it's significant. Um, this happens because the majority of the carbon footprint of a drill actually comes from material extraction, from the manufacturing, from the distribution. Only 2% of it comes from the use. So if we reduce the amount of um, building and, and shipping of drills that, that, that exist, and we just focus on using the drills that we have and put them to use, we're actually eliminating 98% of its carbon footprint. Yes, okay, it's, this is not a capitalist idea, obviously, but it's, it's really right. what needs to happen and what really, yeah. what really works. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's adding the, um, the idea of, of the, the community uh, sharing in a very practical way that, that we all know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so people can go to your website, mm -hmm. right, which is www.hnltoollibrary.org. Very well named. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they can go to your Facebook page and first off, like it, because what's not to like? Yeah, gotta like it. <laughs> and then 
Yeah, the Facebook page is the best place to really keep up to date on all the really exciting stuff unfolding at the Tool Library at www.facebook.com backslash HNLTL. Okay, but if they want to actually become a member, we have to talk about that a little bit. We have, I think we have a screenshot of, of that. So if you go to the, your website, um, having established um, that uh, it is exactly as the name is, hnltoollibrary.org, um, you can uh, become a member, and that's how you're going to be self-sustaining? Um, pretty much, yeah. We, we, we ask for a membership fee, uh, which is very minim minimal, which is going to help us maintaining the tool and keep, keep the operation going. Uh, so right now, what you see in the center is our main membership. We call it Make It Membership. And that's pretty much, that's the real deal. It allows you to um, borrow as many tools as you like for up to seven days, and there's absolutely no additional cost. However, if you don't want to spend that huge price, right? <laughs> there is a cheaper <coughs> membership, it's called Fix-It Membership, and it allows you to use, um, you have a little bit of limitation on the number of power tools that, that, that you can take. Uh, you can only borrow for up to four days. And some tools, the one that requires you to spend a lot of money on maintenance, um, might have a small charge such as two or five dollars, depending on the tool. And you're in the process now of building out your inventory. And yes. you're, you're looking for tools, is that right? Yeah. So if somebody has a bunch um, growing mold and, and rust in, in the corner, this might be a good way to... Uh, Absolutely. So it's really important that people don't look at us as a rental company. We're not buying tools and saying, oh, these are our tools and you can use them. It's more like, let's come together. Uh, we all have tools in our house that we're not using. them. Instead of just have them, sit, have them sit there gathering dust, let's just bring them all here together. And while you're not using it, somebody else is using it and making something out of it. And that's very generous, the 50, the 50, even the $55 one. I mean, who, who uses more than three power tools in four days? <laughs> right, right, exactly. I mean, unless you're a right, it is very professional. Generous. If you want to compare it to rental, uh, rental companies, then it's, you know, it's, there is almost no comparison. You, you're going to spend that price on one tool for, for half a day. And if somebody does have some tools that they want to donate, they get a tax credit? Yeah, they get a tax deductible receipt. That's Very right. nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, the Reuse Hawaii is in Kaka'ako. Um, it's on Makai. It's um, uh, sort of behind the um, the. Uh, it's Makai of Alamoana Boulevard, and I was going to say it's behind the uh, Im old immigration building, but that's probably not helpful to most people. <laughs> I guess you just Google it. Um, but <laughs> We do have a map, yeah. but how do you describe it to people? I well, I, I just I'm a I'm the kind of person that I just Google map things, <laughs> so I don't even I usually don't bother trying to explain. I just say just Google it, and that usually works. Okay, but just if I if I was to explain it, um, I would say buy Kakako Waterfront Park uh, and try to find Kiava Street and just drive toward the ocean, and it's gonna be there. It, it's a really big warehouse and it has a huge reuse hawaii logo on it so it i would say that if you drive by you'll see it you just gotta yeah. keep your eyes open and and don't get waylaid by the the little signs that have reuse and then point um towards diamond head and then oh yeah the next <laughs> the next road is actually a parking lot it's yeah. you'll get there eventually but it is the only warehouse in the in the area and it's pretty massive so if you see it drive drive toward it and that's a fun place to be anyway isn't Absolutely. there great people yeah they have all kinds of cool stuff yeah um, we're, we're super grateful for our partnership we use and um to speak more about sharing and reusing oh, what's been great is that everything that we built in the tool library, such as our counter, uh, our checkout counter, our shelves, uh, everything comes from from what Reuse Hawaii had in their in their warehouse. So we're not going out to Walmart and buying an, and buying new stuff. We're just this is stuff that would have otherwise been on the land, uh, in the landfill, and now it's serving the community through the Honolulu Tool Library. Well, that is that is the way it's supposed to work in yeah. the sharing economy. Um, so let's take a quick break and then come back and talk some more about it. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Reg Baker, 
and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas and with me today is Elia Bruno from the founder and executive director of Honolulu's first tool library named HNL Tool Library and the director of uh, assistant of development, <laughs> Kristen Jameson. So um, Kristen, tell us how you got involved with this. Um, I guess I'd say that I got involved from that first UH Manoa Soup. Um, that I put on in coordination with the HNL Soup folks. Um, and that's when I got really interested in the idea. Um, and then Aaliyah was really looking to build a tribe and a community to help bring his idea to light. And so he asked me if I'd help out, and I said, of course. So speaking of community, um, we've talked about how you're, you're working with the sustainability group at UH on Honolulu Soup and Reuse Hawaii. And there's also the Honolulu Community Foundation, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, we're so grateful. Um, that's pretty much how we got our first real, real grant through Hawaii Community Foundation. Um, while we were negotiating our partnership with, with Reuse Hawaii, um, so that's really what helped us get in, get in our feet. So thank you so much to the Hawaii Community Foundation, if you guys were watching. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you are also um, reaching out to other community groups like uh, the K5 group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we realize what we're doing is not only going to help individuals, but it also has a great potential to help um, all the other nonprofit organizations and community organizations that are out there. Um, so last Saturday during our tool drive, the folks from k -Vibe actually came down. k -Vibe, by the way, is an organization that um, I, I believe they fix old bikes and then they do. teach kids how to yes, fix them. They're and, and they're yeah, wonderful. Yeah, they're great. So they actually came down and brought a, a bin full of bike tools that we're now going to make accessible to the whole community so that you don't have to buy bike tools. Um, you can just come down. Mm, it's a library. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah. And then you can go for I mean, that whole area is great for riding bikes. Yes. It's one yeah. of the best bike riding places right. uh, in, in Honolulu. So you can make a family, right. a family event of it. Bring your bikes, get them fixed, and yeah. then go for a ride. A very similar community partnership um, is about to be established with Permanent Blitz Hawaii, uh, which is run with Surf Rider Hawaii chapter. Um, they, their mission is to build awesome edible gardens while keeping in mind water storm runoff and make ocean friendly um, gardens. So they're also thinking of just donating all their tools to the tool library and so that everybody can access them while they're not having a perma blitz and when they need it they can always come, come back. Oh and that's yeah. brilliant. I'm a, a, a veteran of, <laughs> of several perma blitzes and that's always an issue. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. it's like hauling them there. Who's where do you keep them when you're right. not doing the perma blitz? Right. And where are they? Where did or they go? Just the fact that they get used once a month or less, um, you know, it's it's a waste issue. So, so um, obviously, this isn't just like um, power tools. This is um, real gardening tools. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Gardening, electric, plumbing, carpentry, automotive, automotive, you name it. Yeah. Okay, and the the time. So if somebody, um, you go to the website, you choose your membership, you're all signed up, then you come down to Kaka'ako. Uh, first, you check the pay Facebook page, though, to make sure that you guys are, are open. Well, um, yeah, the timeline is about to develop, because right now, actually, kind of a news is that Today is, a, is the first day that you can go online and buy a membership. So uh, we, we just activated actually this morning. So if you're watching, you could be at the first two library member right All now. All right, we haven't even announced it yet. Let's yeah, do get it. On it. 
and then um, and in a couple of weeks you'll be able to start borrowing tools so um, by then we're gonna have set hours so that you don't have to go to the Facebook page and check you'll know that on a Wednesday and Saturday um, we're gonna be there and we're gonna announce the hours so that you make sure you, you'll be sure to find us there okay so um, so actually n right now you can not this weekend for as of tools. now no um, by Thanksgiving yeah most likely. Nice long weekend for yeah. a DIY project. Yeah, definitely make some gifts. <laughs> okay, and then of course, yeah, there's Christmas coming up, and right. but mm. not everybody is um, knows how to do use these tools. Um, are you guys gonna do some skill building um, activities? Is that in the plan or? Um, I think one of the most exciting parts about the tool library is the ability for us to share skills. Uh, with each other and with the community um, and that huge sense of empowerment you get from building and creating something and so um, we are one of the ways that we're really hoping to build this community is by having weekend workshops where people can come put something together build something learn a new skill help volunteer at the tool library and then kind of in the longer um, term have you know recurring weekly bi-weekly kind of workshops um, to kind of teach people how to use those tools and how to make awesome things with them and also another portion too is that you know if we're renting out potentially dangerous tools that you know people are gonna have to take a safety class to make sure that people are using these tools properly wow that's great a safety yeah. class I know yeah. it doesn't sound exciting but actually oh, <laughs> there it's it's, safe it's, fingers, a, <laughs> so. it's the barrier between me and power tools actually the fear factor yeah <laughs> but if I took a if I took a class then I might not right. be afraid and we surely I mean sp truly speaking rental companies don't do that they don't care if you're borrowing a chainsaw and don't know how to use it or shops don't don't care if you're buying a tool that you don't know how to use but we care um, um, so we'll make sure that before you take a tool that could potentially cut your finger off you know exactly how to work it safely because some tools are dangerous but they're only dangerous if you don't know about that potential danger that's in the tool um, a, lo a lot of tools if you know that those couple right things you'll be completely safe to use it and um, how are you learning to use these tools? Uh, well, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a tool expert yet. Um, <laughs> well, one thing turned to say for me, this tool library is not just about tools. It's more about community and sustainability, as you probably might have understood. But the truth is that nowadays, you don't really need to be an expert because we all have a, have a great friend named Google uh, <laughs> or YouTube. You know, you can go on YouTube and learn how to do anything. So we de we're definitely going to encourage our members, hey, you don't... You, you think you don't know how to do something, just go on YouTube and trust me, after five minutes, you'll be good to go. And another <laughs> really awesome thing, too, is that the kinds of people who walk in and out of reuse on their Saturday mornings, these people love to do woodworking projects around the house. And so there are some real woodworking experts in reuse, and we're really hoping to kind of bring those kinds of people into our tribe and you know, grow our collective skill base. Wow. So, so not only are we sharing tools, but we're sharing skills, too. Yay, so that's another opportunity for people to um, be engaged. Yeah. So if they have a skill um, and they're willing to share it, they should reach right. out to you. Yeah. Maybe send you a little message on Facebook or something. We look forward <laughs> to um, this being a place where everybody's a student and everybody's a teacher. You got a skill Aww. that you can share with the community, I mean, do it. And actually in the long term, we were talking with Ruiz Hawaii to um, actually create a little makerspace area so that you can come into the warehouse with just an idea of a project and we'll have the tools, reuse, we'll have the material. Together we're going to have a, a space where you can actually go and make the project happen right there. That is a beautiful, beautiful vision. There was a Oahu makerspace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do you, do you, did you ever go there? We, we, we chatted shortly. I still didn't take the time to to go and try to create a connection or partnership between the tool library and the makerspace. But oh, does it still exist? It's, mm -hmm. I, I believe it still does. Oh, okay. From what then I know, it still does. Uh, it used to be uh, near Al Moana, and I, I know that it, I remember that I went mm -hmm. there, and that was cool, but um, it didn't have all the parts together like mm -hmm. you have at Reuse. Having right. all of the components there really makes a lot of sense, and there's enough space to have classes. That, that, um, that uh, workshop behind us 
yeah. <laughs> is actually the uh, the maker will be the makerspace. Yeah. So well, <laughs> this is currently only for reuse employees um, use, but um, it is part of our vision to to get a make it accessible to the community during certain hours so that you can come in and work on your projects. A lot of people that live in the area don't have room to work on their projects. We're talking about Kaka'ako and uh, it's going to be just tall buildings and nobody's going to have a carport or a backyard to, yeah, to no build garage. something. Yeah, no garage. That's true. Right. That's so true. Everybody in a, hi in a high rise, that's, I mean, yeah, There's where are you going to do? There's absolutely no room. It's small studios for the most part. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, uh, I don't know if you um, were part of it, but the uh, there's a there was a urban farmscape plot, a uh, two blocks um, diamond head on Ilalo Street. I don't know if it's still there, but I'm seeing this whole sort of beautiful thing happening in that mm -hmm. in that area where um, tools, materials, places to grow things. That's really um, such a healthy vision for for that community. Yeah. yeah. So um, you talked about long-term, uh, including a maker space. And um, is this going to be like a, a full-time thing for you? Or do you, we'll what do you know? We'll see how it develops. Um, I, I hope it will. I mean, this has been a, a great journey. And, and it, it just feels good to be helping people, you know? So if I could be helping people like that full-time, it's, uh, it's great. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. And Kristen, in our in our last thirty seconds, <laughs> is there anything that you would like to add to this? Um, Volunteer days. Yeah, uh, I guess what I'd like to add is just you know we're always looking for more people to bring their energy and their skills and their tools down to us, and that I'm just really excited to be a part of such a holistic project that really hits all three pillars of sustainability. Um, and I'm just really impressed with you know how Aliyah's really made his vision come to life. Yes, in a year. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think uh, I have to say this project embodies everything <laughs> that I, I, I really um, think is so critical for Hawaii having a sustainable f future. You know, working together, sharing resources, and being positive about yeah. it. <laughs> right. Thank you both for coming oh, down to so Think much. Tech Hawaii. It was a great pleasure. Thanks for having us.